My kids come first, my house comes first, my husband comes first. And I'm gonna do anything that I can to make them happy, also to make myself happy. Oh, yo. Hello, hello. What's up, coworkers? What up, coworkers? Welcome back to this week's episode of the We Outside After Work podcast. I'm your host, Dana. And I'm your favorite, favorite, favorite of all time. I'm Aaron. What's up, y'all? And we got a special guest in the building. We got Kim in the building. Clap your hands. Hello, everybody. Before we get into um, some of what we do, Kim is a podcaster of her own with the, hold on, hold on. I'm going to get the name right because, you know, I don't want to mess nothing up. It's the Let's Get. I had it ready. It's right here. The Let's Get Personal Podcast. You can find it on Spotify. Um, one of my favorite podcasts because it's nice and short. You know, we don't need to be here for three hours. Joe Button in it. You know, sometimes we like to get in 15, 20 minutes so we can get somebody with a real insight, real perspective. So shout out to you, Kim. Thanks for joining us. Thank yes, you. Yeah. Thank you for having me. I'm super excited to be on this episode with you guys. I'm I'm a fan. I'm going to tell you, I'm a fan. I listen to your episodes going to work in the morning and I'll be laughing. I'll be into it. I'll be like, oh, this is so good. Okay, let's get started. We do start with our icebreaker questions and this is just something to get the conversation flowing. I'll ask the first one, which is what is the best way to spend your lunch break, Kim? So the best way to spend my lunch break, because honestly, it's a short one, too. Mm-hmm. Um, I like to uh, like now that it's getting nice outside, I like to sit outside and sometimes I'll read like little things on my phone. Um, I do have like a Bible app. So I'll sit there, read Bible verses. Or if not, my husband will call me. So we'll be on the phone for a little bit. Mm-hmm. But I got to eat my food. If I don't eat my food... I am cranky. I need to fuel myself up. <laughs> so, do you eat your lunch in your car or do you go to like the little cafeteria? No, so honestly, okay, so now since it's getting nice outside, they have a lot of benches outside. Okay. So, I'll sit outside by myself in a little corner and I'll set up my lunch and I'll have my water and I'll just sit there. And while I'm eating, like I said, I'll either read something on my phone or I'm on the phone with my husband or I'm actually just meditating, thinking to myself. Are you meal prepping or are you you getting something to eat? Honestly, um, I don't buy nothing from work. I do not like vending machines. <laughs> I really don't. I I despise vending machines. Um, so I honestly pack my lunch every day. The only day I do not pack lunch is on Fridays. Mm. But I still don't buy from the vending machine. I'd rather go to the store in the morning and buy me a little, you know, sandwich or something and have it for lunch. <laughs> Yeah, um, I have a long lunch break, you know, uh, sorry to, to put that out there. I got an hour, so that's a nice little chunk of time. And f- the first thing I want to do is get the fuck away from everybody. Like, I don't want to be around y'all. I like, like that, too. Like, I've seen y'all for four or five hours. I'm ready to, you know, move along. And I, I kind of just like being on lunch in my car. Like, I put on whatever I'm listening to, like a YouTube video, podcast, uh, a new album that dropped or something. And then it's either one of three things that I'm going to do. I'm going to go to Chick-fil-A, I'm going to go to Chipotle, Chipotle, or I'm going to go to Popeye's because that's what's in my area. And I'm spending like $30 a damn a day just off of this stupid ass food. But I'm lazy. I don't want to meal prep. I don't want to do none of that extra shit. Mm-hmm. And the stomach is filling it. So I'm, so I'm <laughs> Okay, so for me to answer the question, I have two points of view. So one was when I used to go to the office and I was like Aaron, where I have to get away from the building. Um, There were times where I would do lunch with my coworkers. So we would go to like the local pizzeria or um, like an Asian spot that was over there. But most times like I meal prepped. I had my lunch in my car and I would drive to like the park and just chill on the bench and just like enjoy peace and quiet and away from work drama. You got one of the pretty little lunch boxes. <laughs> yeah, we go there with a little lunch box and shit. I, do, I did have a lunch box. I got it from Target. Um, and then now. <laughs> yeah, because you have a dollars Yeah, they better be cute. <laughs> Um, And then now, since I work from home, um, I kind of can take lunch whenever, as long as I do my job, obviously. So I'll walk my dog. I'll take like a power nap. I'll do like other personal stuff like the podcast editing. Um, So, yeah, I think it just depends of like 
what things you like to do to kind of like take your mind away from work for a little bit. So You know what I hate, though? The people that work on their lunch break. Like, if you don't t- sit your ass down somewhere doing all this extra fucking work, I don't need you to do that. Like, go sit down. Like, get out my get out my face. Or if you're by, like, the kitchenette and people are talking to you about work. Like, that was always my thing. Because for some reason, people always thought, like, IT knew everything and that was going on within the company. And that's when they were doing, like, mass layoffs and stuff. So, mm-hmm. we're like, Dana, you know what's going on? Like, who's getting fired? Because we do get the termination list first. That's crazy. Like, yeah. So, they would try to come to me for, like, drama. And I'm like, oh, I have no idea. Like, we just got to wait and see. Um but yeah, like, I hated that. Like, don't ask me shit on my lunch break. But you know what I hate the most is that one motherfucker that won't shut up during your lunch break. Like, yo, I'm not on your break. I'm on my break. I'm, the one, that they're look- I'm the one that they're looking for on break because I disappear. I-, I go and I disappear in a corner. You cannot find me. When break is over, they're like, yo, where were you? I don't know. I'm I'm my <laughs> we have a, a young gentleman. I don't know what school district this man was teaching in. Um, but he's going to be on a break from work for a little bit because he was just uh, terminated from his position as a teacher because he had some young ladies helping him after class to take his hair out. Now, I don't know it was after class. It, well, it was after studies were done for the class. Like it was classes okay. about the end. Okay. Um, so they didn't have any work to do. Everybody got passes to go into his class. It seemed to be a little coordinated, but um, a lot of people got upset. A lot of people felt like it was not the right thing for a teacher to be doing. So what are y'all thoughts? Should that teacher have been fired for having those um, young ladies assist them? Or did people overreact? I'm going to let Kim go first. Okay. So this is my take on it. I feel like as you know, the generation, how it is now. Everybody gets offended too quickly. Everybody gets butt hurt too quickly. I felt like he should have known better because he is a teacher. Do I see anything wrong with it? No, because you you know, nobody knows the relationship he has with his students. Mm -hmm. I grew up where I had really close relationships with certain teachers and it was just because the person that they were and how caring they were. And you can tell that they were caring teachers. They cared about their students. But now, like I said, I feel like as a teacher, you should have known better. You should have not had your students taking out your braids in class. But I also feel like they should have never fired him. I feel like they could have gave him a warning. I feel like they could have gave him a suspension, but not fire him. That was too much just for braids. Yeah, um, I agree. I don't think it was that big of a deal that people made it. And then I seen it on Twitter and was just looking at the thread. And it like, I think people were projecting their own issues and their own uncomfortability where it was like, oh, it's a male teacher having a whole bunch of um, girl students taking his braids out. But my thing is like, nothing to me seemed any like inappropriate about that, number one. Number two, the issue I did have though was the fact that he recorded it and posted it. Yeah. Like, I don't think that was necessary. Like, if, you know, he wanted them to take his braids out, okay, cool. Maybe record it for his own personal memories with these particular students that, you know, he had that relationship with. Okay, great. <laughs> but I think he went a little too far posting it, not covering their faces, not even current covering his faces. So you kind of just put everyone's, you know, identity out there without, mm-hmm. and you know they have parents, so you think mm-hmm. they're just going to be cool with it? Like, Nah, like I don't think I don't think on his end he really <laughs> thought about the whole situation it could lead out lead up to be. Yeah, um personally, I think he doesn't understand optics, right? We all are very aware that sometimes shit just looks bad. It might not be bad, right? It's like traffic. Me and Dana had this conversation about traffic on a podcast before where you're riding by an accident and you're thinking like, yo, traffic backed up for a mile and a half and it's a flat tire, right? Yeah. It looked bad, but it don't mean that it's bad. But he got to be smart enough and self-aware enough for that. I also wonder where were the boys at, right? If this, if this was such a big deal and it was not about little girls and different things, where are the boys at? No gay boys wanted to take his hair out? No <laughs> wanted to take his hair out? Do they playing basketball? Do you think that matters? Do think that matters? No, I, do. I do think it matters because at, at the end of the day, they should have been somewhere around, right? Were they in the classroom? Were they doing homework? Were they reading a book? Like, where were the boys at? 
So you think it would have been different if he would have showed the boys? Yes, because it comes off like it's a it's a class activity and not a girl activity. But you know what? My whole thing is, why record it and post it? You put yourself in trouble. I feel like he put himself in that predicament because he could have just got his braids taken out and that was it. Mm -hmm. And what if they do that all the time, meeting. though? What yeah. if they, like, help him take his braids out all the time and it's, like, something mm -hmm. they do? But exactly. why would he post it for everyone to see? You know, like, that was, like, my question. Like, that I'm big on that, too. But I'm also big on the history of groomers in the education system. Like, from the school I grew up, since my mother was a kid, they were talking about these gym teachers in particular being pedophiles. And those gym teachers was there after I left and continued to be pedophiles. Uh, we also had women teachers who was having sex with the boys. Like this is a history of teachers grooming these children. So you just gotta know better. Like, I don't think you did nothing wrong, but it's, it's just, it's like a Catholic priest. I can't just go smack a boy in the ass and say good game and not somebody think that, you know, I'm. But why, why does it go to that thought, though? Because, because that's that's you're having girl students take his braids out. Like, why does it automatically go to some type of sexual point of view? Like, that's the mm -hmm. weird thing to me. And that's why I feel like people are projecting whatever issues they went through mm -hmm. in their childhood. And it looks uncomfortable. Like, even um, you'll see pictures of like fathers with their daughters like just doing father daughter things and you'll get those comments of like oh the father is a little too close like it's always something weird and it's like why does your mind automatically go to that yeah because I, because i watch pretty little liars okay and i've seen a whole bunch of girls when they were younger have huge crushes on their teachers so this is like a real thing it's not like a 16 year old girl is not going to crush on her handsome teacher okay right. like i'm sure you've had a crushes on i don't know if you yeah, guys right miss van toes what's good <laughs> <laughs> but my thing is it's the teacher's um responsibility not to cross that boundary because obviously the underage mm -hmm. and two you're the adult in the situation yeah but again on his end i do think it was dumb for him to post that for everyone to see so yeah you lost your job that's your fault and now people are talking about you yeah, yeah definitely bugging but um, speaking of speaking of jobs, we want to get into a little bit of being at work. You know, I know we talk about being outside of work a lot. Um, yeah. And part of being outside of work is the family life. Right. And while Dana and, and I, we aren't married. Kim, you are married with how many wonderful, beautiful children? I have two girls. I have mm -hmm. a seven year old and a four year old. Right. So the type of work that Kim does and me and Dana didn't get a chance to talk about this and you can be specific of how you want to be specific. Mm -hmm. I don't want to put your business out there. Um, I want to get into that field and what it's like being a wife, a mom, and a woman in that workplace. And then we can have a conversation about that because I think it's super duper interesting, like how you navigate those um, spaces. And so, balancing everything. Absolutely. So, if you want to give us a little deep dive of what you do to the degree that you want to tell us, and then we'll get into your family life. Okay, so I won't say the company name just because I don't want that somebody sees it and I get in trouble. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but I am, <laughs> I am a machine operator trainer. So I train people to operate big, heavy machinery. Um, we do. I work for a battery company, a worldwide battery company, and we make batteries for planes. We make backup batteries for like big corporate buildings. Um, hospitals, trains, we make batteries for like caterpillars. Mm -hmm. The things they use outside to fix these streets is what we make batteries for. Mm -hmm. um, it is a male dominated company. So it gets pretty difficult sometimes because I get men who I have to train. I've been there for six years, FYI. So I know what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. And, you know, these men come in here and they're like, oh, it's a woman training me. So they look at me with this side eye, like she don't know what she's doing, but then I prove them wrong. And basically, you know, they put their foot in their mouth. Cause they're like, wow, this, this little tiny thing knows what she's doing with these big machines. Sometimes it gets difficult because I work, I come home and it's like a one switch on one switch off. Come home from work. I'm a mom to come home. I have to cook. I have to clean. I have to prepare the girls for the next day. My big one goes to school. My little one, she'll be starting school soon. So, you know, it's a, it's an ongoing cycle where it never stops. Mm -hmm. 
also on top of that of being a mom and being, you know, a working mom and having everything going on, I also am a wife. So I have to dedicate time to my husband. And it's kind of hard because we work off shifts. Mm -hmm. So it's literally doing during the week, the most we might see each other is for like 10, 15 minutes. Oh, wow. Yeah. And by the time he gets home, I'm sleeping. And by the time I'm leaving work, he's sleeping. So weekends is y'all time. Leave me alone, kids. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But it also gets hard sometimes because we don't have the help. It's like mm -hmm. a pick and choose when people want to help us. Mm -hmm. So there's weekends where it's like there is no time for us because we're playing mom and dad. We got the kids. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got to prep for the new week coming. You know, so it's a lot. It's a lot. Yeah. Well, first and foremost, it sounds like you're doing a phenomenal job. So shout out to you. Being Both of y'all. <laughs> yeah, but Kim has children. She's married, so she does have a lot more things. Oh, I mean, both of her and her husband, not you. <laughs> Why you always gotta start? Like you couldn't not with him. <laughs> I'm cutting that out. Okay. <laughs> my bad. My bad. Let me get back to go ahead, go ahead. Kim. So, yeah, it sounds like you're doing a great and amazing job. So shout out to you. Um, that reminds me of a conversation we had on one of our previous episodes when we talked about just having time to yourself right after work and then switching into mom and family mode. So do you have that at all? Like, is that important to you or is just automatic? Like, OK, I'm home from work. Now let me take care of my children. So. I've tried to balance out my day because I am in a fitness journey. Um, when I had my second daughter, I was over 200 pounds and I couldn't shake the weight off. Like I'll drop three pounds and that was it. And it'll go back up. And that was the biggest I ever seen myself. I've always been petite. I've always been small. So it kind of got me into a depression. Mm -hmm. So I started working out at home and I worked. I work out through a uh, off uh, woman fitness app and I work out five days a week at home. I have weights. I have, you know, whatever I need to get myself going. Mm -hmm. But just imagine yourself working out in your living room while you have two kids running around you, screaming, fighting, yeah. and you're trying to get one circuit done. And you're over here like, can you stop yelling? But you're over here trying to do an RDL. Yeah. Like, it's crazy. But I've learned how to get used to it and I learned how to balance it because if I just dedicate myself to one thing, then I'm not happy. I have to have my time as well. Yes, I'm a mom and yes, I dedicate my time to my kids, but I need also me time. I need also time with my husband. And as hard as it can get sometimes, we make it happen. I love that for y'all. How do you schedule that out with your husband, your time? <clears throat> so... Um, I'm so grateful for my mother-in-law, you know, she might be the way she is, but she comes through when we really need her sometimes. And we'll basically yeah. let her know, like, look, you know, this weekend we need to get some things done. We might add an extra couple things, you know, cause sometimes we got to say that we busy <laughs> so she could stay with them for the weekend, yeah. but she'll stay with them. And, you know, me and him, it's come to a time where we're like, okay, we're going to go out this weekend. We're going to do this. We're going to do that. And then the weekend comes and we just lay in the bed and watch movies yeah. and enjoy each other's yeah. company. And we're more happy doing that than going out and doing other things that we plan to do that weekend. And how long have y'all been together? So we've been together 11 years. We've been married for five we actually got married, I'm going to say, two weeks before I gave birth to my second daughter. Wow. Congratulations to you guys. Thank you. Um, okay. So let's get into just the family dynamic. And um, let's say there's like women watching this, right? Actually, I'm going to speak for me. So <laughs> like I'm at a point where not as much as before, but. Like, it was a point where I was just, like, 100% career mode, go mode. Like, I'm not really focused on, like, family. Like, it'll come eventually. Like, I'm not forcing it. Mm -hmm. So what do you think one of the biggest lessons you had to take away from balancing, you know, the work life and the family life once you eventually had 
your children and your relationship? I've come to realize that when it comes to work, work, you can find work anywhere. Mm -hmm. Don't always make your job a priority because you're there one day, but in an instant they can drop you. You're just, you know what I'm saying? You're just a body to them. So don't see it as, oh, I have to focus on work. Work is the most important thing in my life right now. Yes, you know, with work, you get to provide, you get to give your kids and, you know, you get to live your life the way you want to. But work does not come first. And I've learned that because I was at a point where I was working six days a week, nonstop. I wasn't giving my kids time. I would come home. I'm tired. I just cook clean and I'm, I'm going to bed. You know, you guys already had your day. Now it's time for you to eat, shower, go to bed. I've come to learn with that. I can find another job any other day. Mm -hmm. My kids come first. My house comes first. My husband comes first. And I'm going to do anything that I can to make them happy, also to make myself happy. Okay. It sounds like that's more fulfilling to you than just like focusing 100% on work, like yes. family and um, like the loving relationship, which to me, <clears throat> I can I can understand that. But I just feel like I haven't mentally gotten into that space mm -hmm. where I'm like, I want to give someone 100% of that dedication outside of taking care of myself. So. But no. you know what? Oh, I'm sorry. No, but, I was gonna say, but you know what? That's okay. Because are you dating right now? I am. Okay. Is it, uh, is it, <laughs> have you guys been together for a while or is something new? Oh, I'm single, but I'm just like dating. Okay. So you're dibbling and dabbling around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I dibbling and dabbling. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like everyone when they find that somebody and they know that it's that somebody that they want to be with, mm -hmm. your mind starts to shift and it starts to change. So it's okay if you feel like right now it's all about you. Right. And you could do that. You could focus on you because along the way, when you know that you're ready to be with that person and that person comes along, you'll start seeing the little the little shift and the, oh, yes. but maybe I want to do more of this. And I want to spend more time with this, with this significant other that I'm with. So like I said, it's totally okay to think about yourself first. Mm -hmm. And don't force it. Just let it happen. Yes. Let, you nope. Know, don't force it. Just That's let it come. Now, now you talked a lot about your perspective of being a, a wife, a mother, a homemaker, and being a working woman at the same time. Now I'm gonna shift it to your husband, right? Because for a man, at least in my situation, I wasn't given that opportunity to just say, oh, jobs come and go. Because mm -hmm. I had the law on my ass talking about you got a payment that you got to do in every two weeks, right? So mm -hmm. it wasn't as optional for somebody like me. I don't, obviously y'all were together. So I'm assuming that that's not the case for y'all. And I don't mm -hmm. want to put that out there. Um, but it's a lot of men out here that can't shake the fact that I'm supposed to be a protector and a provider and this job means everything to my family. How would you say your husband is supposed to to look at it that way? Is he supposed to look at it the way you see it, where it's like work is work, family is first? So I can't speak on him because I wouldn't know how he how he feels on this situation. All I know is that he is very about um, I want to provide. I want to make sure our family is good. Mm -hmm. So he does focus on his work, but he also knows that he has to dedicate time to me and to the kids. Mm -hmm. And I give him that 100% because when it comes to dedicating time to me and the kids, he's all for it. Like if I tell him like, yo, babe, you know, this weekend, let's do something with the kids. Let's take the kids to the park or let's do this. We, he's like, okay. Let's go. He's right on it. He's not the type that's like, no, I can't. I have to do this. I have to do that. He dedicates the time to us when it's needed. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you guys are a good match and a good fit where you like, yes, you're working, but you still understand what family means and making that time for each other. So was that something in the beginning? It was always like that or you had to build up to that level that you guys are at now, where it's like, okay, 
yes, we have work, we have kids, but we still need to make sure our relationship, like we're cultivating that and we're not just letting it fall to the wayside. Like, has it always been that way for you guys? So here's the funny part. Um, He, before COVID, he had his own business. So he will schedule his times and his clients around us, around me and the kids. And it was easier because I saw him more. We spent time more. He spent, you know, he was at home more. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you know, COVID messed up a lot of things. He ended up losing his business and he had to come and join the workforce. He wasn't comfortable at first because he was used to being his own boss. Right. But he did what he had to do for his family. So we... It got a little harder now because, like I said, we only see each other very little throughout the week. But I feel like when you have that communication with your partner and you have that bond with your partner and you know that it's secure, it's locked in for life, like it's there, locked in, Mm -hmm. you know, you guys come to an understanding where it's like, we got to do what we got to do, not only for us, but for our kids. Because honestly... I feel like after you have kids, your life isn't your life anymore. It's about your kids. And I promise you one thing. My kids are going to be way better than what I what I did growing up. And they're going to accomplish things that I didn't get to accomplish growing up. And Mm -hmm. even if I got to work seven days a week to provide that to them, I will. And I know my husband will do the same. Love that. Well, speaking on them little crumps, next now I'm just messing with you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Other kids, no, but seriously, because I have two children, one on the way. Dana doesn't have any children at the moment, but she's hopeful that they will come to in fruition. Um, how, huh? <laughs> My bad. <laughs> um, how how do how do you see your children viewing mom and dad as constantly at work? Mom Wait, and dad. Can I add to that? Of course. Question? So maybe this is a separate question, actually. But do you think it's important for your kids to see that loving relationship between you and your husband? And do you think that shapes how their future relationships will be? Because I feel like that is a thing and that is important where a lot of people, they'll be like, well, I don't really know how to be in a marriage because I didn't see that. Like my parents were married, they're divorced, or I only had one parent in the household. And when they're in relationships where they don't necessarily work out or they can't commit to one person, they always blame that parent dynamic of what they saw growing up. So that's good because I'm going to say like a week ago, I was playing around with my oldest and she was like about to chop my head off. But (laughs) I was fortunate enough to live in a household that my parents were together until my dad passed away. So I know what it is to have a mom. I I know what it is to have a mom and a dad. Now, on the other hand, my husband was raised by his mom and step like stepfathers. He never got to have that relationship with his dad. What I've gotten to understand with my husband after we had kids, he's always told me I want to be the best dad that I can to my kids because I never had a father. Okay. So. With that being said, my kids, all they see at home is love. My my oldest, we call her a love baby because she was made with so much love. She is very loving. She's very charismatic. Like we will be walking in the streets and she will say hi to every single individual that walks by us. And she wouldn't even know them. And she walks into a room and she lights up the room because she just has so much love in her and she's so caring Mm-hmm. So all of my kids see is love. That's all they see. And we show them that because we want them to know what it is when they get older, how a man is supposed to treat their woman. Mm-hmm. It's my husband. He's very sweet to me. He's never, my kids has never seen him raise a hand at me, be abusive, be, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Things that happen Unfortunately, yeah, in certain seen, households. Yeah, we've seen as a child, unfortunately. Yeah. And I love the fact that you make it a conscious effort to do that for your kids. Like you're looking more 
outside of yourself because there are a lot of selfish parents that I've seen and I know who they they're think they're doing what's best for their children and they may be like staying in relationships because it's like, oh, you know, I want to have just that household mm-hmm. dynamic, but like there's no love there. So it's like, is it really a cultivating environment? Because, you know, there's two parents in the household, but where's the love? And we had a yeah. conversation with um, Diane. She was the motivation queen. And she was saying how in a lot of the um, urban communities, there's a lack of love at home. And it shows when kids go to school and how they interact with other kids too. Mm -hmm. And it just always starts back to how the parents were together and what they saw. So I think that's commendable. And I believe, and, and I totally agree with you on that because my daughter had a situation in school where there was this little boy that, you know, was kind of like, bothering her and saying little nasty things to her that she didn't like. And one day she came home and she's like, mom, I don't understand. Why is he so mean to me when all I want to do is be nice? Yeah. And I had to explain. Huh? He a little dickhead. That's why. Yeah. Yeah. So I had to explain to her, like, you know, sometimes there's going to be people in this world that are going to try to hurt your feelings. And you just got to learn how to navigate and you got to learn how to just ignore it because not everybody is for you. Yeah. She's like, well, mom, I just don't understand. All I want to do is be nice. And it bothered me. Yeah. Yeah. It bothered me because we don't teach her to be, you know, mean to people. We don't teach her to be rude to people. If anything, we try to teach her to be polite and loving to everyone that she comes across to. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Okay. And it's, it's definitely something that I, as a parent, try to replicate because we know what other kids are. The unfortunate mm-hmm. reality is mom is at work. Dad is at work. Those other eight hours of the day, they're in school with these miscreants who don't know how to behave and don't know how to act. So as much of an influence as mom is or dad is, we still have to deal with these outside factors. How have you seen with the amount of work that you and your husband do, how have you seen your kids pick up little things from mom and dad outside of being polite and different things? Like what character traits do you see that they pick up from you or dad? So for her parent teacher conference, her teacher, we're talking and her teacher goes, I want to tell you something that your daughter did. And I'm like, okay. She's like, the whole class was misbehaving. The teacher told everyone to sit down. When everybody sat down, my daughter asked the teacher if she could stand up because she wanted to make a comment about something. The teacher allowed her. The first thing she came out and said, her teacher's name is Miss Smith. She turned around to the whole class and told the whole class, I think Miss Smith deserves an apology because we've all been making bad choices. Okay. My oh, mouth dropped yeah. because she's only seven. Aw, that's so sweet. And I just feel like for her to acknowledge something like that, it makes me feel good. And I hope it makes my husband feel good because it's letting us know that we're doing our job as parents. Yeah. Because if it was my son, he'd be like, do you want to pop out to the bow bow? Because, you know, you know, know, y'all need to sit down and relax. But and And you know what's crazy? And I didn't believe in this myself. I've come to learn this now in my thirties, affirmations, talking positivity, you know, staying with a positive mind, even though you might be having a bad day. I just started learning that, but I'm starting to teach my girls that Mm -hmm. and they're young. So it just makes me think, imagine when they're in their teens, when they're hitting their young adult lives, they're going to be a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's oh, I got chills saying that. <laughs> that we really try to instill on our podcast is just like the importance of just like giving yourself that love and finding that inner strength and um, that superhero that you maybe have never had and how that can manifest to a better life. And I do think not a lot of parents, at least from what I've seen. They don't understand how much of an impact that can have on their kids to like teach them those affirmations. And the fact that you're doing that at such a young age, like you said, I think that's just gonna make amazing, strong women for their generation. So, yes. Yeah. Well, listen, uh, speaking of amazing, strong women, 
<laughs> we had a we had a nice little viral moment that happened over the the course of last week, where uh, NFL kicker for the uh, Kansas City Chiefs, his name is Harrison Bucker. He he went to Benedictine, Benedictine College and he made a speech. Um, this speech was among other things transphobic, uh, misogynistic, and different things to some degree. And he spoke heavily about women at work, um, women in faith, and women as a, a wife and as a mother. Now, I'm hearing you talk, Kim, and I, I hear you talk so highly about your daughters, right? And the women that they will eventually become and the dreams and the aspirations and the goals. I don't think that you limit those goals to motherhood and being a wife. I think you want their dreams and goals to be big and broad and robust, right? How did you feel when you heard that conversation? And Dana, I want you to chime in too um, about just women in faith and women at work and how that correlates with one another. Damn, that so, was good. I, it was good. It was good. Um, I listened. <laughs> I listened to the little twenty-minute whatever he said because honestly, I just feel like he was just talking nonsense. Uh -huh. First of all. <laughs> Second of all, okay, you know, it's one thing to have faith, but you're not going to sit here and tell me because I'm a woman, I'm a, I'm only made to be a, a, a homemaker and basically sit behind you and praise you while you do everything that you want to do. And I'm just sitting in the back burner and let my dreams go to waste and let my aspirations go in the garbage and just you know, attend to my kids and attend to you. And that's just going to be my life. I feel like a woman can be a homemaker. I feel like a woman can have their own career, be a, a, a mother. They can wear a lot of hats. Right. It just depends on the woman. Okay. There's some women who just want to be homemakers. They just want to live at home and they want to take care of kids and be that backbone for their husband. But then there's other women who want to be entrepreneurs. They want to wait to have kids. They maybe want to wait to get married. Not every woman thinks the same. Mm -hmm. And that's okay. But for him to sit there and just basically put a stigma saying, oh, no, I think every woman should be this and this and this. Mm -hmm. No, I'm sorry. I'm not with it. <sighs> yeah, I think it's just such a very narrow-minded, misogynistic, and old way of thinking because that's how things were back in like what the 18 early 1900s right where like women were so controlled and there's some countries where that's still the case i actually just mm -hmm. saw um a post earlier that saudi arabia just had their first swimwear runway show because you know it is their culture where women have to be fully covered up which is fine you know it's cultural but i just think with this guy, he he's probably stuck in those past ideologies and probably even his parents. Like, we don't really know, you know, like what he was taught at home or what he saw. Yeah. But to think that women are just supposed to support your dreams, like we're just an item at home that's taking care of the household and that's solely where our level of um, knowledge ends, right? Like we're not capable of learning different skills or making our own money and starting our own businesses like i think it's i think it's dumb to be honest and i don't think that's realistic in 2024 in america because like we have so many things that we are capable of doing so for him to say that publicly i don't know i think it was just dumb and embarrassing he said something where he said oh if you were to ask my wife how does she feel about the situation? She will laugh about it. Yeah, she probably like, thinks saying, like she's okay with, you know, supporting him and his dreams and put everything that maybe she had in the back burner. Yeah. I mean, that may just be her, but also too, there are some women where they cannot make their own decisions right like they do need a man to really like lead their lives and like tell them what to do and i guess like that's okay for them but i'm not and from what it sounds like you're not that kind of woman either like it's great to have a partner and do things together but to have someone to control you because that is a level of control Aaron. yeah I nothing. okay but um i don't know i just think it's it's very 
antiquated. That's not the word I was looking for. Okay. But like women got to be stronger, you know, like if you're that and I'm not saying all women who support his ideologies are weak minded. But if you are that weak minded where you cannot make your own decisions and you need a man to really run your life, like you got to do a lot more inner work and understand like why, you know, you are incapable of doing the bare minimum for yourself. But I will say. To be a suitable homemaker in those situations, you likely got to make some kind of money or have some kind of money behind you. Ain't nobody being a, a housewife if you're making 20000 a year. Oh, the guy? Yes. Yeah, he's, he's an NFL kicker. He's making millions of dollars. Mm -hmm. Who knows where his family came from, right? Like, it's people that are sitting on money and sitting on comfort. So if I can sit on comfort, sure, I could be a house husband. I don't get, if Oprah has decided to say, hey, Aaron... Don't do nothing. Just be my new segment. Guess what I'm gonna do? I'm yes. gonna be segment. Like you why not? Have that stability. Like you yes. know you're gonna be taken care of. So I do think that part of this conversation, and this is why not only is it misogynistic, it's a little bit bigoted, is because it displaces people who aren't in that comfort zone, where. I, my debt to income ratio don't look like yours, so mm -hmm. I can't just sit there and say, "Hey, why don't you be a housewife?" When even if I'm making a hundred k. My 100K don't feel like yours. Like, it's so many different factors in it. It's not that people don't want to be a housewife. I had a whole bunch of conversations with women over the last week or so about this. Majority of women will be down to not work. Maybe they don't want to be a machine operator. Maybe they don't want to be in the transformers changing out electricity. I don't want to do that shit. I don't want to be a postal worker. I don't want to be a teacher with these kids. I don't want to be a nurse, right? Yeah. But somebody got to do it, too. So what are you asking people? Do you want men to do everything? If that's the case, I think that's a little off put off putting. I think that's a little far sighted, far righted, if you ask me. Um and he just needs to be a little bit more socially aware. It's again the optics, right? Mm -hmm. Just like we talked about the dude earlier with the braids and we talked about Catholic priests and now we got this Catholic man. It all ties in, you know? Just people just don't understand optics. Yeah, they definitely don't. And I do say I would just agree to something you said, what which was if I had the opportunity to be a stay at home girlfriend or wife and I didn't have to do much, I would feel comfortable, but I'm still gonna do different things to make my own income. Because there's plenty of times where you don't ever want to give someone a hundred percent financial control mm -hmm. over you because you never know what can happen with that relationship. And then you're stuck. And then it's like you're dealing with all of these things that are not OK because you cannot afford to leave that situation. Look, I've learned, I've learned this seeing my mom and my dad my mom never worked a day in her life my dad was always the provider so my mom was the housewife that always stayed home catered to us and you know made sure that every everything was ready my dad passed away my mom didn't have a pot to piss in she didn't have anything she all she had left was what my dad left behind then that ran out and that's it now she has, you know, now she had to learn what it was to fend for herself. And I always told myself being in a house, seeing that my mom was always the one home and taking care of us while my dad was the one always providing. I didn't want to be uh, a stay at home mom. Yes, I want to have children. Yes, I want to be a wife one day, but I want to also be able to provide as well. Just in case, because you, yes. you never know what could happen. And it's crazy. Um, Listen to your story. Obviously, Dana and I resonate in different ways where we've taken things from our own parents as well. The way that mm -hmm. your, your husband took away from his father or lack thereof, and you took from your mom's experience. I've taken from my dad's experience. I'm pretty sure Dana has taken from her mom and dad's experience. Definitely and it's have. like we grow and we try so hard to like distance ourselves from these humans, even though we love them. It's like... Mm -hmm. Sometimes that's our that's our did you make a noise yes I, mm. oh okay <laughs> <laughs> because i agree to an extent like i i'm very self-aware to where i know where my parents flaws 
lied and things between their relationships that I didn't want. But they do have characteristics about themselves that I feel like are important for me to obtain and like to just keep that for my character, um, for my traits going forward. For example, my mom. I didn't ask for this. It's, it's not negative. Nothing <laughs> negative. Like, I'm going to explain it so it's not negative. But my mom, she's the most convincing, manipulating person I've ever I, I, I like the word persuasive. 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 Okay. Word. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for cleaning that. <laughs> um, very persuasive, right? And I really, truly feel like if she was able to use that and like some type of like sales job or like her own business, like she could have really been like a millionaire. So seeing how she's used that and like I've taken that those traits when I'm in like um, job interviews and just explaining myself to the level of how she was able to persuade certain people in certain situations growing up. Like, I do think that's a positive trait that I hold now. So for you guys, like, are there certain traits with your parents that, you know, you may have seen in a negative light, but you're able to now in your grown age, understand that this can be used positively. (laughs) Go ahead, Kim. Um, well, my dad, the finessing, he was a very good finesser. And when I tell you, sometimes he will make you believe that that piece that he's trying to sell to you is the most worthy, expensive piece you will ever have in your life. And I've come to, co- I've come across where there's situations where I had to finesse certain things to get to where I need to get to. And guess what? That phrase, fake it till you make it, sometimes really works. And I learned that from him. (laughs) That sounds like my mom. (laughs) So yeah, definitely. My mom, I've learned to be kind and sweet. I was always very aggressive and mean and always, you know, I was ready to yell all the time. I, I didn't listen. I always wanted to yell. And then I'll hear it later afterwards when I calm down. And with my mom, I, with my mom, I learned patience. I learned to listen before I act out and go crazy. Yeah, for for me, I think my mother's one of her coolest traits is she's just real cool, right? Like she could just blend in, go to any room, and you just feel comfortable with her. Mm-hmm. And I think I share that. Like, and I think my my other brother shares that as well. He's a little bit. Um, just like me, where it's just like we just can be somewhere and no matter where we're at, we are able to blend in. Right. And that's not something everybody can do. Um, it's also really dangerous. Right. Because you might be able to rub elbows with the wrong people and you see the best in them because mm-hmm. like, Yo, that's that's my nigga. Like, <laughs> and it's like sometimes that coolness is is dope. But it's like, why am I friends with this person? And it's like, oh, anyways, um, and my dad. <laughs> I think his ability to not tell the truth sometimes is just like, <laughs> like I'm trying to work on it. Like, I hope you're using it positively. I'm trying to work on it. Oh yeah, I, I lie to get jobs. That's what I do. <laughs> um, oh well, hey, finessing. We just talked about finessing. <laughs> Will it till you feel it? You feel it? <laughs> I mean, I finesse it to an extent. I ain't going to finesse it to the point where I get myself caught up and now I'm looking stupid. You oh know? no. <laughs> Once I understood what jobs could and can't do when they start looking at, you know, hiring processes. Oh, I'm a lie. Because what I'm telling the truth for, I just made one hundred fifty thousand dollars. You know why I put that on my job application? Because you don't need to know that. All you need to know is what my number is. Oh, yeah. you were the district manager at this last place. All you can do is call and confirm that I work there. So I can lie about all of that shit if I want to. Now, mm-hmm. I'm smart enough to recognize, like, don't overstep. Because you'll fuck around and be like, yeah, I was a district manager for a PNC. And now all of a sudden you work in a bank, don't know shit about a bank. Yeah. yeah I so, mean, I would say with the resumes, though, like you, the smallest thing, you can always just big it up and finesse it. Right. Like it's just the wording of it and how well you can explain it in an interview. So for the most part, like your resume is going to go through like that whole automated system to make yep. sure you got keywords and shit. But then it's like the actual manager they're not reading your resume like paragraph per paragraph like they want you to explain it yeah i I got caught once 
I got mm-hmm. quote once. <laughs> this shit asks if you had Excel experience. You know, everybody, man, I'm good on Microsoft Word, Microsoft Office, PowerPoint, Excel, all that shit. Yeah. It was for like um a teaching recruitment for North Star in Newark, New Jersey, right? So I'm like, man, this is easy. I got this. They put us in a classroom and they had us on the class computers and they gave us a hundred question test on Excel functions. I don't know this shit. I'm like, yo, I've never seen that password processor. Like, I know, I know what I know. I'm like, they don't teach this shit in class. Like, why are y'all giving me this? Because now I feel stupid. Mm-hmm. It's like, why are you putting The fact that they give you a test. They gave me a fucking test. test. Questions about Excel is overboard. But it's like, is this the only thing that y'all use? Y'all don't use a regular Word document? Like, I could write on Word. I can literally type 70 words a minute. Give me that test. That's crazy. Okay, um, but we are getting to the end, guys. We got about 10 minutes left. So, Kim, this yes. is the point of the show where we do our happy hour moments. And it is something that we can't wait to come to fruition or something that's already happened. So, what is your happy hour moment? So, actually, my happy hour moment is in July. We're going on our family vacation. Um, I'm excited. We got everything squared away we're actually so we're actually taking a road trip so we're gonna drive to florida so i'm excited oh trust me i'm not ready for the drive i'm ready to get there and have fun but it's just the experience of being with the kids being with my husband we're gonna be all together driving each other crazy having fun so i can't wait for july to come it's taking too long i'm just excited for that what part of florida are you going to so we actually got an Airbnb in Tampa. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a definite so, trip because you got to go west. Yeah. So we got a, it's going to be 15 hours and a half, but I made sure that that Airbnb had a pool so the girls could have a ball. Like we're going to have a good time. We're going to take them out. We're going to go do fun activities. So I can't wait. I'm happy for y'all. Yeah. Thank I always look up um, things to do in XYZ city. Because I like mm-hmm. to make sure that I have an itinerary planned out. Because that's, the last what thing- that's what I've been doing for like the last month and a half. I'm like looking at stuff we can do. Some cheap, some that you know it's gonna be a little pricey, but it's gonna well, be worth it. Yeah. yeah, you know you got a budget. You got to be on a budget. <laughs> you deserve it. Y'all deserve it. Thank you. Next time, lead the kids. Though. I'll just mess <laughs> <laughs> listen. <laughs> you gotta take the kids. That's you another know. conversation to be had. Oh, leave their asses with grandma, Nana, uh, mom. Trust me, that one is coming next. Okay. You want um, me to go? Or I you- go? I go. So my happy hour moment is next weekend. My mom, she was having a get together for Memorial Day. So all my cousins from New York are coming out to Jersey. And she brought everybody scooters and helmets. Oh. And yeah, it's going to be a fun little family day. And I got to buy more food and whatnot because I'm always the person to get the last minute items. But I love family I'm days. Grateful. Yeah, I'm great. But why do they need helmets? They're going to ride scooters. Who falls off a scooter? They're you kids. never know. They're young, though. They're under 10 years old. If you, first off, if you're 10 years old falling off a scooter, you, you I said just, under 10. They're under 10. That means if somebody's nine, that means yes. they ass don't need no helmet. We ain't have no helmet. We ain't have no elbow pads. We ain't have no knee pads. We ain't have no shin guards. It's a different time nowadays. Like these kids are a little more, you know, soft. Yeah. They, they <laughs> definitely less- are. Yeah. So, like, and because they don't have scooters, or I don't think so. So this is a time where they're gonna be outside and like in Jersey, you know, like come from New York to New Jersey. It's kind of like a nice getaway. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's like going from uh, Pennsylvania to Florida. You know, <laughs> she's from Pennsylvania. So. Listen, Pennsylvania is nice and calm, but it has its areas where it's all raunchy and. Ugh. I know. I live there. It's what part nice. do you live in, Kim? I live in uh, a Reading area. Kind of close to like Allentown and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like north. Is that north? Yeah, somewhat north. It's like in the middle. I'm like Philly. I'm thinking from yeah, Philly. Philly. Okay. I'm a, yeah, so I'm an hour away from Philly and then I'm two hours away from New York. Okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, you don't get no service out there. Don't even go out there. I can service. You get the service. Okay, I got T-Mobile two days ago, and I just had to switch. I hate T-Mobile. You only had it for two days. Listen, so I just had to switch from my job plan, which they had a Verizon, and I was driving from a doctor's appointment two days ago, and my service just went out. Like I couldn't use my maps or anything, and I was lost for like ten minutes, and that's never happened to me before. Oh, that's because it was T-Mobile, or where you doctor was. Well, because I've been to this doctor before with my other service, never happened. So I'm like, T-Mobile got about a month to fix this. And if not, I'm going to go pay them Verizon prices and get better service. Well, I've had T-Mobile since 2008. Now I'm a very satisfied customer. So I don't know what to tell you. Now, she even swears T-Mobile is bad service. But once T-Mobile boy Sprint, she ain't had the problem. So um, <laughs> okay. my happy hour moment is I actually want to give a shout out to the brothers at the program. Um, they had their Lawrence party yesterday. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to make it. But, you know, seeing black men just be successful, um, put their visions into mine is definitely dope. I um, also want to give a huge shout out to my cousin, Justin. Uh, he he started a, a venture. I believe it's called Exquisite. I don't know what it's called. I should have been prepared for this. Um, Exquisite. <laughs> it's all good. We can, we can edit that out. Um, Exquisite Experiences, LLC. It's a... Um, it's like a, a company that provides you with chairs, tables, tents, and different things for your events. Um, and they just got off the ground running for about two months now. So it's just good to see people that you know of putting work in, um, not just building up their own portfolio and their equity, but giving back to the community. Um, we love that for us, you know, as people. We had the program on the podcast a couple weeks back. Um, also, a big shout out to Jason Enrique. Um, that's how me and Kim got in touch with each other because they was on live and I was going a little crazy, <laughs> but, um, it's just, it's just what it is, is a community. It's a community of good people, good energy. Um, and you know, I love that for us. Thank you, Kim, for joining us. We definitely appreciate it. Um, and we appreciate you for being a supporter because you really be looking out for us. Listen, let me tell you something. I'm not going to lie. If I don't like something, I don't like it. But I am a fan of the podcast. I love the episodes. You guys be doing your thing. I love the way you guys work together. It's genuine. It's authentic. And I think that's what we need more of. Yes. So thank you guys for having me on. It was such a pleasure being on with you guys. And I cannot wait to listen to more episodes because I'll be at work. I'll be driving to work all like, oh, this is good. <laughs> Thank you for the support. Yeah, because um, a lot of preparation and time goes into these podcasts. I'm sure you know because you have yes. your own podcast. Mm -hmm. But, like, yes, the finished result seems it seems easy to some people because a lot of people that I run into, they're always like, I'm, I'm going to start a podcast. Like I always have great conversation, which is dope that, you know, people want to create their own mm -hmm. platform, but it's just so much that goes into like dedication and time that like, yes. it's not easy. So we do appreciate the genuine support of you really tuning in every week and we'll see your tags and our reposts, Aaron will repost. So we love we love that engagement. So thank you. Of course. And, and we gotta make sure everybody goes to Spotify so we can at least subscribe to your podcast as well. Give us a quick synopsis on what your podcast is about so the people know what's up. So my podcast is basically about I give some I give people platforms to speak their stories, their truths, you know. Sometimes people have experiences that other people might feel like they're experiencing alone. And it's like, you're never alone. Someone is always going through something either similar or the same, but in a different aspect in life. And just know that you're never alone. You're, Michael, you're Michael, always going to have someone there. What happened? Michael Jackson said it best. Yeah. Michael Jackson. You are not alone. Never mind, Dana. You are not alone. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, don't sign up for karaoke, please. Oh my gosh, I love karaoke. Really sure. <laughs> but oh, honey, wants to say hi. Oh, our mascot. Mm -hmm. First time the people get to see our mascot. Hey, oh, she's so he cute. He's a boy. She's oh, he's so cute. I mean, I, I thought it was a girl because 
honey. I know his name. I know. I know. He's so cute. I thought his name was Hot Pockets. That's how terrible. <laughs> I'm bad. I'll be messing it up. Okay. You definitely but, do. <laughs> but guys, if you do want to join our podcast and be in this middle frame or seat, because we're doing in person in June, hit up our Gmail at woawpod at gmail.com. And with that being said, be outside. Outside and yeah. out. Thanks, Kim. Thank you, guys. <laughs>